Another day, another attack launched from the right against Senator John McCain over his call to block Gina Haspel from becoming the next head of the CIA over her history of support for torture and also her history of torturing people. He's not a fan of that <laughs> and the right's not a fan of him for not being a fan of that. Although he himself has been tortured so you can sort of understand why he's coming from where he is. Um, now this time the attack is actually coming from inside the White House. It happened at a communications meeting with several dozen people present and uh, uh, what's the first name? Um, uh, Kelly. Kelly Sadler uh, said this, it doesn't matter, he's dying anyway. And this is according to a source at the meeting. And just as a general bit of advice for the White House, if you have a meeting and there are two dozen people there, don't say anything you don't want being in the Washington Post the next day because there ain't no chance that it's not getting leaked. Um, but she apparently said that and uh, another source confirmed it. Both sources said they believed the comment was intended as a joke, but that it did not go over well with others at the meeting and it was described as uncomfortable afterward. Well, that's good news. I was worried that everyone would have just like like laughed uproariously. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess that is slightly good news. By the way, it's absolutely confirmed. She then apologized, called and apologized to Megan McCain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though others attempted for a while to pretend that it hadn't happened or that it was just an allegation. Um, now, she initially didn't re uh, respond to a request for comment. The White House put out a statement, sort of a general statement of support for John McCain that I thought it was interesting nobody signed. It was just the <laughs> White House. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they were wondering where Donald Trump would come out on this whole thing and they didn't want to be on the wrong side of it. Can yeah. you consider yourself a conservative who's um, so called pro life if you joke about someone dying of cancer? Um, well, is there, I mean, what are the positions that people in the Trump White House actually hold? Who knows? Yeah. This more one, money. <laughs> yeah, more money for us in particular and no one else. Mm -hmm. uh, that's definitely a position held by the White House, and that's about it. Uh, she apparently worked for the Washington Times before, so one of these, you know, mm -hmm. right wingers, uh, zealots, etc. So not very surprising. Her job is to uh, fight against illegal immigration, as they frame it. Uh, again, not surprising that then you would find a vicious person to to hold that job. But I have a, a slightly different take on this. Look, I, on the one hand, uh, they're just so terrible at McCain over and over again. These. Right wingers. I mean, I thought we were at the bottom of the barrel yesterday with Fox News saying uh, that he was Songbird John and gave away our secrets to the uh, North Vietnamese when he was tortured. Which <laughs> but, he didn't. Yeah, which, no, to which is a lie. <laughs> yeah. um, but there, as I've told you a million times, there is no bottom to that barrel. So then, the, and then Kelly Sadler goes, "Oh yeah, Fox News, hold my beer." Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, so yes. On the other hand. They do far worse and so it was a stupid joke in the midst of this thing. It shows how callous they are, but I, I feel like it's not one of the more important things. And I agree, what, I and, agree. And, and it goes towards one of my pet peeves about media coverage, which is that they are so obsessed with civility and part of why they can't stand Trump, uh, but to the detriment of substance. So the fact that Gina Haspel uh, ordered the torture of people and then destroyed that evidence to me is a billion times more important than a stupid and thoughtless and callous joke that some staffer made about John McCain. But for the press, they're like, oh, John McCain is beloved, yeah. this joke is unacceptable. Uh, and they, to be fair, they do talk about the torture. A Although, lot, a lot. Uh, yeah. They do, a lot. I'm not a fan of her. Right, uh, but stuff like this gets huge, huge attention. The destruction of the tapes, they almost never talk about. And that to me was yeah. the most illegal and most brazen thing she did. So look, I got. I have to be honest. The coverage that I've seen in regard to Haspel has been good. They have talked about the tapes. Maybe they haven't talked about the tapes as much as we'd like, but it's always mentioned in the media coverage that I've seen. So I want to give them credit for that. You know, New York Times did a good job in covering it as well and getting very detailed about what happened under her watch. Now, with that said, though, I think that this story is important. I think that it goes further than you know wagging our finger at people and telling them to be civil. I mean the. The discourse that you see in the White House has already spread throughout the country and the fish does rot from the head down. We are incredibly vicious little animals and you know, Trump has opened the floodgates to the point where people think it's okay to openly joke about someone who's dying of cancer. So I, I think that we need to take a step back as a country 
and you know, really have a discussion about whether or not this this is the kind of conversation we want to be having, or if this is the way we want to be treating each other over a political disagreement. And really, you're that loyal to Trump that you're going to turn around and you know say these vicious things about a man who not only served in the military, uh, you know, went to Vietnam, but was a prisoner of war for years and still didn't cave under that kind of yeah. pressure, right? And and by the way, you're doing that to be loyal to who? To someone who's a a draft dodger, you know, who had a, was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Like it's just pathetic mouth, and disgusting. Well, right. that's the thing about it. I know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pathetic and disgusting, but we've become so, uh, you know, it's become so normalized, and it's mm -hmm. frustrating that, that yeah. this is what we're looking at. That when there's a bully making these these horrible jokes in in public and and on Twitter, that his administration does this, that, that people who work under him are encouraged to act like this, um, and it's frustrating. And then there's a flip side to it where anytime anyone makes even even the slightest joke, you know, the, the right. Michelle Wolf uh, um, mm -hmm. correspondence dinner, the, the outrage from the right about how dare, you know, she call um, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders a liar. She's a liar. Like, like that's fine. That's almost not a joke. But you know, <laughs> when it comes to something like this, like we have to, I don't know. We have to yeah. deal with with this kind of bullying and and not be able to fight back. It's frustrating. I think that we need. So I think there will be some on the right who will either not understand the difference between those two things, the reaction to this and the reaction to Michelle Wolf, or at the very least will pretend to not understand it on TV because that's their job. So I'll explain it to them. It's not the joke that's the problem. We're analyzing what is the foundation for the joke. If Michelle Wolf makes a joke about Sarah Huckabee Sanders burning facts and creating a perfect smoky eye, the foundation is the press secretary is a gigantic liar and we need to be clear about that. So you could say that the joke's a little bit weird, maybe, but the, the foundation is strong. What is the joke about this from Kelly Adler? The joke is, He's against torture, and so screw him, screw his entire history, nothing that he has ever done matters, and he'll soon be gone. It's not the joke that's the problem, it's the fact that the Republican Party is so willing to turn on one of the Republicans that they almost made president a few mm -hmm. years yeah. ago mm -hmm. because he doesn't like Trump and he doesn't like torture. And those two things, or either of them, is enough to make you irrelevant in the Republican Party. Yep. Uh, look, uh, in a sense, Trump has tortured the co national conversation, and so it's gotten uglier. And that's why it, even me today, I think like, oh, uh, they're laughing about how uh, John McCain is going to die. I find that to be kind of a perfectly normal story coming out of the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in the old days, it, it would have been outrageous and unthinkable, et cetera. But it's it all the fish rots from the head down. He, he is the guy that it, during the campaign said. I prefer people who weren't captured. Um, and to, to Anna's point and to this from yesterday when we covered uh, the Fox News story about McCain, um, torture doesn't work. Uh, when John McCain was tortured, uh, he gave other he gave up the names of the other members of his squadron. Uh, he named the Green Bay Packers offensive line. <laughs> it just it leads to false information. Uh, but as long as it makes you feel good because you're being vicious. And you're taking out your frustrations as Gina Haspel did. They, she authorized the waterboarding of Abu Zubaydah 83 times. If it worked, why did you need to do it 83 times? So they know that it doesn't work, and they do it because they are vicious. So them celebrating it internally is unsurprising. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below. Then you're a TYT subscriber, and second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.